It's been about eight months since I've owned a seven millimeter PRC. And I'm gonna be upfront with you. My seven PRC project, the content I made on it, the hand loads, the accuracy, it was all a disaster. The first thing that was a disaster was the accuracy in that rifle. You know, especially this ammo. You know, I tested all of the Hornady ammo and this one by far shot the worst. But not only was the rifle and the accuracy an absolute disaster, the velocity was terrible. Now this rifle wasn't some 20 inch or 22 inch barrel. This rifle had a 24 inch barrel and the velocities were abysmal as possible. So we'll really see what the top velocity okay, is for my rifle. So did you go downstairs? 2800. Seems about right. The velocities were so bad in my personal 7 PRC that uh, people accused me of uh, doctoring footage, of lying about what type of uh, powder or charge I was using. I had people telling me I was ruining my reputation. And since I've posted those 7 PRC videos, since I sent the gun back to the company, I've gotten a lot of comments since then from people telling me with 24 inch barrels, they can't get velocity either. So in this video, I wanna show what the 7 PRC really is doing. I wanna prove to you that I was not actually underloading this cartridge. And maybe we can find out why your 7 PRC is slow and why mine was. I really think that it comes down to three reasons why your 7 PRC and my 7 PRC could not get the coveted 3,000 feet per second. Number one, you have a 24 inch barrel or a 22 or a 20. Yeah, you're never getting velocity with those unless you go really over pressure. I have always said this, if you get a Magnum, which the 7 PRC is definitely a Magnum, get it in a 26 inch barrel. Now, Hornady claims you can get these coveted velocities with a 24 inch barrel, that it's an extremely efficient Magnum. Guys, that's an oxymoron. There are no efficient magnums. And I'm gonna show you in a few minutes why these numbers that they're giving you, well, they're nowhere close to 3,000 feet per second in a 24 inch barrel. Now when the 7 PRC came out, everyone naturally compared it and called it a modern twin to the 7 Rem Mag. Well, that's not really the case. The 7 Rem Mag actually has about six more grains of case capacity than a 7 PRC. What is really closest to a ballistic twin is the 7 WSM. These are within about one grain of case capacity. They're really close. With this case size, which I think is very smartly designed, and let me explain why I think it's incredibly designed. It is an extremely accurate cartridge, especially in hand loads. I've seen some incredible hand loads in the 7 PRC, but this cartridge is really wasn't ever designed to hit 3000 feet per second with a 175 grain. The only powder that has proven to get the 7 PRC 3000 feet per second in a 24 inch barrel, bear in mind, has been Reloader 26, the coveted magical fairy dust powder that no one can get. All right, we're gonna use GRT here. We're gonna see what kind of velocities GRT says the 7 PRC can get with the powders I tried. Uh, one thing you'll obviously notice is that doesn't say 7 PRC. It says 7 Rem Mag. However, uh, the cases are fairly similar. Uh, I went ahead and used the correct case length, the correct case volume of the cases that I was using, the cartridge overall length, and the barrel length. We're using the 175 ELDX and I don't have access to Reloader 26 so I use Reloader 22. Yes, it's not going to get me near as many vo much velocity. One thing I did is I went straight to max and I'll show that in a second but I also didn't think I was going to get 3,000 feet per second with max which is 65 grains. So I went ahead and went up to 66 grains and GRT says I'm at 66,000 PSI and an estimated velocity of 29.53 feet per second. Let's go ahead and see what my 7 PRC got. Go. 
2873. You're moving point of view. 2941. That's much better. So GRT was within 12 feet per second of what I actually got in my rifle. So at least in my specific 7PRC with GRT, it seems to be somewhat close. One of the first things I did when I got the factory ammo, the Hornady ELDM match ammo with the 180 grain, is I pulled some bullets and went to see what powder Hornady was using. And I was like 99% sure they were using, let me show you, in GRT they were using H1000. Uh, I had H1000 right next to it and I pulled the bullets and they looked identical. And then I weighed them and they averaged around 67, maybe 67.1 grains. And according to GRT, we're going to be in the low 2800 feet per second with that in a 24 inch barrel. I want to talk about this in a little bit later uh, with uh, H1000 is I don't think it's the ideal powder for a 7 PRC. As you can see here, at least with what Hornady loaded in their factory ammo, you're not getting a full burn. So let's see what my actual velocities were. We're going to first start with Hornady factory ELDM ammo. Did you go downstairs? 2800. Seems about right. Before I talk about reason number two why your 7 PRC might be slow, let's go ahead and look at the receipts aka the brass that I kept. As you can see, there is primer cratering and then you can see the ejector mark. So anyone that claims that I was underloading 7PRC just to make it look bad, here's your proof, guys. There it is. There's another ejector mark. Actually, three ejector marks. There's a decent amount of primer cratering. There's another ejector swipe. I think you guys can get the idea that I did push this as much as I could. Okay, so what's reason number two why you might not get that 3,000 feet per second? Well, if you're using Hornady Brass. Sorry guys, I put Hornady Brass uh, on the lowest tier of brass quality. I'm not trying to be rude, but uh, it's not great. And from what I could tell, I was getting pressure signs pretty early with Hornady Brass, and a lot of you that commented on my videos also said, stop using Hornady Brass, it sucks, get ADG or Peterson, and you will be able to load it hotter and not hit pressure signs on the brass. So if you're using Hornady Brass, you're probably going to hit pressure earlier than some of the higher quality brass like ADG or Peterson. So if you do want to hot rod your 7 PRC to get those 3,000 feet per second velocities, get better brass. Lastly, now I can't guarantee you're going to be able to get velocity with using the right powder, but I think you're going to get better velocity, you're going to get better accuracy, better ESs if you use the right powder. So what is the wrong powder for the 7 PRC? Number one, don't ever use this crap. Stable HD is way too slow burning of a powder. Uh, I guess if you're a huge fanboy of ball powder and you've got a rum case, sure, go ahead and use Stable HD. It's just way too slow burning for this somewhat smaller 7PRC case, okay? N570. Don't use N570, at least with the lighter bullets. I, I've seen a lot of success with the heaviest bullets, like the 195 and N570, but yeah, I would only use it in the heaviest. Same goes with H1000. It's too slow burning for any 175 grain bullet. It's, it's just not an ideal burning powder for 7PRC. So what powders are ideal for 7PRC? This might be extremely difficult to find, but IMR7828 SSC. You should be able to find N560. Another good one is N565. And then there's always H4831SC. That one's not going to get you the best velocities, but man, does it shoot well. In the end, you should have just gotten a 26-inch barrel.